he just uh, has a really well-balanced way of, of enjoying the world, having fun, and producing great artwork. This weird combination of science and art um, on a landscape, understanding how the world works. Well, I personally had a PhD, one of the best scientific minds in America, by my side for five years teaching me this stuff. So now I know how to take you out to the strata. Ray Troll is an interesting guy. He's a guy that really likes to have fun. I mean, he's never not having fun, whether it's making music or making pictures. Ray is um, somebody who's always looking for ways to make things more interesting than they are. So I began to learn how to read the landscape with Kirk. The paleobotanist that's sitting next to me in the car for 10 years as we go on these road trips. Any spot on any modern landscape is the end point of a narrative of this planet. And drop me out of a plane anywhere in the world, give me five minutes and I'll start talking about what happened on that spot in the distant past. I'll start snooping around, see if I can find some fossils, and pretty soon I'll start to construct a narrative of that place. So then put me in a car and start me driving with Ray next to me in the car seat. And we're time traveling across the modern landscape. And we're we'll traveling as we move along, we'll go to rocks of different ages or landscapes of different things. You know, you just, you're trying to kind of get the feeling for what an animal is about or get the feeling for, uh, uh, you know, what's going through their heads or just how they look or how their anatomy might work, you know, as they kind of move around. I'm trying to capture a gesture. And that's what great, Ray is so great with, is he takes some crazy Cretaceous ammonite and then just riffs with the form of that ammonite. And there's so many extinct things that were one-offs. They live, they die, they're gone. If it weren't for fossils, we'd never see these things. And Ray brings them back, and he doesn't just bring them back into a dry illustration in a textbook, he brings them right into the heart of modern culture and, and brings them so we can all enjoy them. I'm inspired to do this stuff. I'm really loving doing this. But over the years, more and more science has drifted into it. And that's just being involved with the subject matter. But number one, I'm an artist. I want to do a piece of art that's enjoyable to look at. We will read the landscape uh, from the point of view of its history, not just its human history, but its deep prehistoric history. And so this uh, cruise in the Fossil Freeway is 5,000 miles around the American West. And literally the entire way, there's not a moment on the trip when you're not um, seeing something that happened millions of years ago and seeing it preserved in the shape and the form of the landscape. No, it's not too much different than when I was four years old and I picked up a crayon and I wanted to draw dinosaurs. And 51 years later, I'm still doing it and I'm enjoying it ever, you know, just as much as I did back then. The Cruising the Fossil Freeway map that he did, it's 472 individual images of fossils exactly where they were found on the landscape. It's not what it looked like, but it's like a way to capture just how crazy diverse it was. I mean, what you, what you realize when you start to study evolution, the evolution of life, and the geologic time, and the duration of this planet, is that there's so much stuff has gone down that nobody even thinks about or knows about. If you know the science behind the stuff, you'll get more out of it too. So all the ammonite freaks that are gonna come in and see the ammonite painting, they'll be counting the tentacles and seeing if perhaps I put a hood on the animal or am I making it more squid-like or more octopus-like. And the paleo nerds will know that I've got the time periods all right, you know. But I might be doing something like throwing a cheeseburger into the equation or a pencil into the equation. But still, you know, there's a Jurassic scene that we're painting in there. But yeah, I'm in there in my pajamas, you know. So there's levels of understanding you gotta have about it. But number one for me, is it a fulfilling piece of art? It's also the, my inner five-year-old that I think we all need to stay in touch with. Does it look cool? You know, if it's cool, okay.